Hello, I'm James Barth, and today I'd like to tell you about our Rock Hard 4x4 skid plate system that we make for the JLs and the JT trucks. Now, there's a little bit of motor mount differences between the four cylinder and the six cylinder and the, and the Gladiator trucks, and so we have a bracket change that we'll show you between the different ones, but the skid plate system is pretty much the same throughout all of them. It's available in quarter inch aluminum and 3 16 steel. Now, a couple of the things that set our skid plate system apart from others. When we originally were designing the skid plate system for the JL over the JK that we've been building since 2007, we ran into a couple problems. And one is the distance between the front axle or the front of the oil pan to where the cross member is with the new eight speed transmission, it moved the cross member further back in the Jeep. This making what we would originally have as the oil pan skid longer. When we originally built this, we designed it with that oil pan skid longer. And we went out and did quite a bit of testing and we weren't able to get the strength that we needed to give you an adequate system with that. So what we did is we went back and sat down and we re-engineered the skid plate system to what we've come with now, which has these dual cross member systems in it. So what we've added is, if you look right here, we've added this one inch by two inch solid steel piece of cross member. Not a tube, but a solid piece of steel. We've machined it and drilled it and tapped it where needed. And this has allowed us to get the bracing that we need so that we can give you the strength that we need. The oil pan skid is now shorter, and then we have this full belly pan that goes across the complete center of your Jeep. This making a, a coverage far superior than to anybody else in the industry and what you are needing on your Jeep. Then you have a resonator skid and your fuel tank skid. They're available for your four-cylinder Jeep, your six-cylinder, two-door, and four-door, and gladiator truck. Now on the four-cylinder skids, there is an additional skid that goes right here that it covers that big battery pack area that you have underneath. It's right out in the open, and if you put your Jeep over a big boulder, you're going to be knocking into that battery system. We don't want that to happen, so we built this skid plate system. We're going to go ahead and show you how to install this on each of your vehicles. We're going to show you how to install your skid plate system from Rockhard 4x4 on your Jeep JT Gladiator here. Now, we have it up in the air so that we can show you and get you some pictures from better angles. This can be done on the ground. We're going to remove this cross member here along with this trans transfer case factory skid. The transmission cross member, the main cross member, does stay in the vehicle. We are going to remove this little T cross member in front of it also. We'll go ahead and do that now using an 18 millimeter socket. Now that we've removed the cross members out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start off by installing the motor mount bracket on the left hand side, the driver's side, that will go to our arm that comes down to the oil pan skid. We're going to go ahead and install the motor mount bracket in the back hole of the motor mount. You're going to put the lock nut on the top and the half inch bolt through the motor mount. You will notice that there's no bends on the top side but there is a slight bend right here on the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and install the passenger side bracket. Put the bolt through the arm and you're going to install the nut on the top side. Look at your front belly pan skid. You'll see that we have the two outer bolts and we have these two here where the oil pan skid and where this bolts into the cross member. These are, the bolt pattern is shifted to the passenger side. So when you bring your cross member up, make sure you have it oriented accordingly. When you're doing this on a hoist, make sure that you allow enough room on your hoist of where you rack it to get this cross member in place. And start your outer bolts on each side with a tapered washer on them. Now that we've hung the brackets coming down from the motor mount, we're going to go ahead and put one bolt in the center of this belly pan skid and hang it from the cross member. This will allow us to slip the cross member in from the back, which is the one that is machined for the gas tank, and the one from the front. 
We've installed the driver side rear cross member bolt. We'll align the cross member in place and we're going to slip the fuel tank skid in here. The fuel tank is going to go in between the cross member and the belly pan skid on the center and then you will put the spacer in between the belly pan and the fuel tank on the outer area there. Go ahead and install the long silver bolt with the spacer with the tapered washer. Now we're going to go ahead and install one bolt here in the center. Now at this time also, you should have two bolts across the back on the right, the one on the far left, the, th the two in the front, and we're going to go ahead and finish installing the th two others, making the three in the center. Now we're going to go ahead and take two additional center cross member support bolts and go ahead and install them with tapered washers. These are also the black bolts that are included in your hardware kit. Now we're going to remove the bolt by the fuel tank by the right rear tire. You will remove it using an 18 millimeter socket and you will install a bracket and bring the, our new bolt with a 19 millimeter socket. This particular bracket is very similar to another bracket used on the fuel tank, but it only has one bend on this upper end. Now we're going to go ahead and use an 18 millimeter socket and remove this mounting bolt here on the fuel tank. Now we've went ahead and installed the bolt that holds this hanger in place. This rear bracket is the one that has the taper towards the upper side. Now that we've set the fuel tank skid in place, we'll go ahead and make connections at our braces using the 3 8 bolts and nuts included. Earlier in the installation, we installed this bolt here with the protector. We're going to go ahead and remove it now and also remove the nut off of the rear control arm by the resignator. This will allow us to install the skid plate over here, on here, and here. Now when you slip this skid in place, it is going to go on the rear bolt for the control arm. Now you can go ahead and reinstall that nut. It's going to take a carriage bolt here with the square opening with the nut and the washer on the top. And you will reinstall the bolt on this side. Now, this skid goes in between the belly pan skid and the cross member. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the actual oil pan skid of this installation. You're going to identify two half inch by approximately around an inch and a quarter long bolts and two tapered head protectors. You're going to go ahead and put the protectors on. You're going to grab the oil pan skid. You're going to hold that up in place on the cross member here. And install the bolts. Be sure to leave everything loose. Because we've left our motor mount brackets, this arms coming down from the motor mounting area from the frame loose, we can move them around. They go on the inside of the skid. You want to line them up, push it up, and then put a bolt in to hold it in place. Then go ahead and install the nuts on the inside. Now we're going to go ahead and install this skid plate. This goes on the driver's side off of the suspension bolt here. Now, it helps protect the exhaust. One thing to keep in mind is if you have a suspension that allows a lot of dropout, don't necessarily run this skid if you're concerned about clearance. We're going to go ahead and remove the nut on the control arm. This will allow this to slip on. Then we will take this nut plate, put it on the inside of the oil pan skid, and thread the bolts up from the bottom. Now we've got every component installed. Everything is still loose. Now we're going to go ahead and start tightening each of the bolts. We're going to start at the cross members. Front and back cross members, you're going to tighten all the bolts on them first. 
Then you'll go to the resonator skid, the fuel tank skid, and your oil pan skid. Let's go ahead and tighten everything up and finish your install.